From the inner sense of time Comes the ancient poet's rhyme Bringing us the master key To open up the mystery From the depth of time and space We arrive in quiet grace Finding what is meant to be As we explore the mystery Pouring forth from days gone by We can hear the poet sigh From the depth of ecstasy Moving into mystery Hello, and welcome again to Creative Connections. I'm your host, Gary Blanchard, and today my guest for a two-part episode is artist, illustrator, Ruth Sanderson. Ruth, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. So you have been uh, in the Ware area for a while. Yes, we actually um, lived in Ware for 20 years. Okay from 1985 to 2005. Okay. And now we live in East Hampton. <clears throat> All right. So you, you definitely have that, that wear connection. Yes. <clears throat> you have been doing art and illustration for a, a good while. How did you get into doing that? Well, I went to art school in Connecticut. I went to the Pear School of Art. Okay. Which is now the Pear College of Art. Now they are they are accredited, although it was a very good school. Oh sure. When it was just a an art school only, um, and I went there for four years, and then I found an agent, okay. and the agent represented ch children's book material, so a lot of she got me a lot of textbook work in the beginning, and it was a very good learning experience right out of art school to to have a, a lot of work that was. Um, you know, sort of con continue to develop my style. Okay. Uh, is there any particular genre that you are drawn to, or is it whatever comes along? Well, my favorite genre is fairy tales. Um, okay. I grew up loving fairy tales. Um, and the fir very first fairy tale that I illustrated was... Uh, Jane Nolan's sleeping, retelling of Sleeping Beauty. Okay, right there. Right there for Knopf. I did a series of three books for them, uh, Heidi and The Secret Garden first, and then, and then they asked me to do a fairy tale, and, and Jane did the retelling. Okay. And that was my very first fairy tale. And after that, I started doing retelling myself and doing some original fairy tales. Okay. And so I continued with um, that the company Little Brown and illustrated quite a few, I think 10 fairy tales okay. all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you kind of did the retelling as yes. well as the illustrating. Yes. Uh, In fact, there is one. Um, well, this is the cover of my art book, which is a, um, a compilation of 30 years of my career. So in it are a lot of um, different different uh, illustrations from many different books. So it's over 200 pages, full color. Uh, this is a scene from my favorite fairy tale, The Twelve Dancing Princesses. Okay. And I decided to put it on the cover <coughs> um, of the book and call it Golden Dreams. Okay. Uh, I love painting gold. <laughs> and, and this uh, painting is called Golden Wood? The Golden Wood. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I was telling you that uh, my very first introduction to your artwork was at a fair somewhere here in Massachusetts, somewhere in the early 2000s. And my wife and I bought a print of the Golden Woods that we still own. Uh, we wow. took it to, to from here to Maryland and then brought it back. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a beautiful painting. Thank you. When you're doing something like this, 
you know, a lot of times when we, I think of illustration, I think of somebody sitting down drawing a page size picture. <laughs> How do you do it? Well, I do, I do sketches first quite small, but I want the paintings to look very realistic and I take photos of, of models in costumes. Okay. And research, do different research for the backgrounds. And then I do very large paintings because for a scene like this, for instance, this is half the this is half the scene. The other half, all the twelve princesses are in right. one long picture. Uh, so to to be able to get enough detail in a very small head, I have to do the the painting fairly large. So this okay. painting's pr close to three feet wide. Okay, you know, and and I think you know to me that that whole process is fascinating because. As someone who appreciates art, but doesn't know a lot about art, I, I love hearing how people create what they do. And it makes sense that, a, you know, I can see the detail in the faces here. And I could see where it would be very hard to put that type of detail if in a, were... a tiny little spot. So here's the, the cover of the <clears throat> original version. Okay. And it was actually happily reprinted just a few years ago um, by a local publisher, Interlink Publishing, and they have put all my fairy tales back into print. So they're now available again. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, so the 12 Dancing Princesses, where did that story come from? So that is a Grimm's fairy tale, and it's okay. one I was familiar with growing up. It's one of my favorites, and it was also the the editor at, at the publishing house. It was one of her favorites too. So she asked um, if I would like to retell that one first. Okay, yeah, that's that's interesting because <clears throat> that's one I'm not familiar with, and mm. you know I'm of that age where we did grow up with the Grimm's Fairy Tales, but uh, it's not one of the big ones like. Cinderella, everyone's yeah. heard of Cinderella or, or Snow White. When you're doing something like <clears throat> Cinderella that Disney has <coughs> turned into a commodity, <sighs> how do you kind of break that and get people to accept that it doesn't look like the Disney version? Well, I think you need a little help from parents on that when they <laughs> purchase the book and read it to their child and the child has seen the Disney Cinderella, you know, they have to explain that there are many different versions out there and each artist that, that paints it, paints images, has their own vision of it. Yeah. And Disney is one that's one artist. You know? Right, right, right. And yeah, yeah. yeah, so. I mean, much like, you know, they, Hollywood seems to be loving to do remakes now. So, you know, you've got a movie that starred Bruce Willis that now has somebody else in it. Right. And you have to adapt to that. But I, I think it's good for children, too, mm -hmm. to realize that, you know, you can imagine people any way you want them to look. Right. The Snow Princess. What? That's another one I'm not familiar with. Yeah, people think that it's a retelling of the Snow Queen, which is more well known. The Snow Princess actually was a, was an opera and perhaps a ballet, Russian. And it was never made into, into a children's book. Oh. Um, basically, the character dies at the end of the at the end of the ballet. <laughs> so okay. it's sort of like as, as they often do. As they often do, <laughs> you know, like Swan Lake. And, uh, but uh, I sort of added a twist to the ending, so it com it comes out a little differently. Okay. Um, and I was I was very very proud of that one. Yeah. So uh, it's it's wonderful to have a love of something like fairy tales. And it must be wonderful to then be able to support yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> by bringing these to life and bringing them to, to children and, and their families. So we have here... Another uh, group. So the, 
So this is more or less the boy group. The, the previous yeah. ones were more or less <laughs> the girl fairy tales. Right. After doing a, a few fairy tales I decided that were really more geared toward girls, I decided to write an original one and that's The Enchanted Wood. Okay. So I wrote it specifically <laughs> for boys. And you know, I, I love the, the cover and I don't know how well the audience will, will see it, but uh, there's a little, there's a guy on a horse right there getting ready to go through a gate. And just looking at that picture says to me, I want to, I want to know that story. It's the call to adventure. It's the hero's <laughs> journey. I'm sure yeah. you're familiar with Campbell, Joseph Campbell. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's that archetypal hero's journey. And it's right. always the, it's the youngest son that wins the day or the, the weakest character okay. is, is, yeah. is common in, in any hero's journey yeah. story. And, you know, that's particularly interesting in a story in that time period, because of course it was the firstborn son who gets all the inheritance mm -hmm. and titles. So it, it's kind of nice to have the underdog. Yeah, but and often in, in almost every fairy tale, it's always the youngest son that wins the day. Huh, yeah. I've, I've never noticed that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one here, the golden mare, the firebird, and the magic ring. So that is a retelling of a, of an, actually it's a few Russian fairy tales elements of different ones combined into my own retelling okay. of that that theme yeah there are and a number of stories with with magical horses and a, a number of russian stories with the firebird so yeah sort of a combination yeah. uh, and again here is a cover that just draws you in the the firebird is so bright the horse is just absolutely stunning. Thank you. And I know we will talk in our, our second part of this interview more about horses, but uh, looking at this horse, looking at the eye of this horse, I can feel it alive. Mm. You know, and then there's a boat in the background with the, the sail and the sun symbol on it. So again, it's just like you look at that cover and say, I really want to read that book. Having some nephews, uh, I, I can see some, some Christmas shopping in my future. <laughs> uh, so here we have some more books that you've done. These are titles uh, that I worked on with Jane Yolen. Okay. So Sleeping Beauty was our first collaboration. Okay. And then she wrote uh, a lovely poem where Have the Unicorns Gone? Very evocative poem. And I illustrated that for Great. Simon & Schuster, I believe. Okay. And then I'd, I had always wanted to do a little horse lullaby. <laughs> and I called Jane up one day. She's very accommodating and she's very fast. And I said, Jane, I, I, would, love, I, I would love to illustrate a, a, a little horsey lullaby. Would you? Would you be interested in writing that by any chance? And she said yes. And at 9 a.m. the next morning, there was a draft <laughs> in my email oh, of wow. Hush Little Horsey. That's wonderful. And I think she made like three word changes in the whole thing. It was just perfect. It was just really lovely. Sometimes something is just meant to be. This one here, the Arch oh, of Bone. Arch of Bone. She just, this, this just came out last fall. Okay. Actually, it might have been November. And this is a middle grade novel that I illustrated in, in Scratchboard. And this is her imagination of what would have happened after the end of the Moby Dick story. Ah. So the boy is the son of the first mate and she just sort of takes it from there and he has an adventure of his own and gets stranded and dreams about the whales and his father and oh, it's just an a wonderfully evocative evocative story and, and by and Jane. Again, the cover will draw you in. And, and did and, you, you see know, did you notice the, the whale at the top? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the re, the um, 
the viewers can see that. Yeah, but. yeah. Uh, you know, it's so important. You know, right in here, there's a, a faint whale that uh, almost, it blends in with the clouds. Right. Which is, is absolutely beautiful. And inside, in the interior illustrations, I have whales and the clouds in, in the, the black and white okay. in Scratchboard. Okay. So they're all hidden. Whales are hidden everywhere in oh, the book. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> You it's know, a wonderful story. When, Highly recommend when it. When you have something like this to illustrate, how do you come up with the ideas for what you're going to draw on? Well, I read the story, and I guess images appear, the, the concept appears, and I do you know, some small little, just little doodle drawings, okay. idea, idea sketches, okay, like yeah. little concept sketches, really small. Okay. And and then I usually find find models and and do some photography sessions. You okay. know, the boy is is a real boy who lives in my town. Okay. And he was a very very nice model. Yeah. Um the the right age and okay, and yeah. he had a really nice expressions. Yeah. The so. other thing I love about this picture is the way the sunset or sunrise, whichever it is, mm -hmm. is reflecting in the water because it it's it's got that broken feeling that you would have looking at the reflection on the water mm -hmm. and so often when i see people do that it's like an exact reflection it's like mm, no no it wouldn't be <laughs> it not wouldn't on be. water because <laughs> water moves <laughs> yeah yeah anyway and here we we get into the holidays so i have a few christmas stories that i've done a traditional nativity story <laughs> and then the traditional night before christmas by clement moore who okay. everyone everyone is familiar with that so yeah so uh, you know i enjoy doing uh doing christmas themed um pictures and when, when you were doing the the nativity here it looks like uh certainly borrowing some of the techniques from some of the uh, icon, iconographic mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. things with the halos and right. it reminds me very much of seeing some of the icons from yes. Russia and mm -hmm. places like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and again, the tender look of Mary looking down at Jesus. It's, I think, one of the few depictions of Mary that I've seen where she actually appears as a loving mother mm. and not just this saintly being that is all beatific. This is like, this is my kid, mm -hmm. you know? I was aiming for that, thank you for <laughs> noticing. <laughs> yeah, which is hard to do in sort of an iconographical style, which it is. It's yeah. sort of a, a little bit influenced by both iconography and, uh, and Renaissance. Okay, yeah. Which I love. I love the Renaissance yeah, I, I thought, paintings I, I as well. I was thinking Renaissance, but I, I wasn't sure if that was the mm -hmm. right area. It's sort of a combination. It's sort of okay, a, yeah. a little bit of East meets West. Now, when you're doing these illustrations, and you're doing them in large paintings, right? The uh, the nativity isn't too large. There may be 12 by 15, okay. something like that. But not not what, too large. What, uh, what medium do you usually work in? I work in oils for the majority of my books. Okay. I've... I've Worked in oils since since the eighties when I when I did the Heidi and the Secret Garden. Okay. Uh, before that, I worked a lot in watercolor and in acrylic, but when I got the the job to do classics, it just felt like they needed to be done in traditional in right. a traditional way, and I always had loved <clears throat> oil painting. Yeah. And and, and you so know I we're talking them. a lot about your work as an illustrator, but. You are indeed a painter, and you do exhibit your work at various places. I remember seeing, I, I think it might have been the Golden Wood at uh, the Norman Rockwell Museum uh, when they had the fantasy exhibit last year. Uh, and I know that you have won uh, at least one or two awards at the- uh, Here in town. Here in town at yes. Workshop 13. And in addition, um, 
I've shown in at the Munson the Munson shows, oh, okay, um, which are very nice, and a few other local shows. I, I show every year at the at the Michelson Gallery, okay, and and they do uh, represent a lot of my work. Okay, so a lot of my originals are there. Yeah, um, you know, and uh, as much as everybody, I know I would love to own an or original uh, Ruth Sanderson painting. I, I know it's a little out of my my range as a retiree, but you do have them available. Some of them as prints and yes, I do. And I, you know, my website ruthsanderson.com. You can find me very easily. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I offer um, nice size, limited edition prints. Right. Uh, I I know we ran into you uh, in Munson. At the uh, craft fair, the, the big the craft, craft fair. fair they have in Munson, yeah. and we we bought a, a book for my nephews, which you not only signed, but sat there and did this beautiful cat oh. drawing <laughs> on, on, on it as well. That was fun. That's actually my my only humor, humorous um, book. <laughs> okay, was um, a castle full of cats. Which uh, oh. Well, yeah, this was another cat story. <laughs> speaking of cats, this was fun, um, and this was our cat that posed as Papa Gato. Okay. And my daughter, my daughter actually posed in in the <clears throat> outfit. <clears throat> okay. And then we I used his head and her gesture. Okay. And then you know the the picture in the background of the of the other cat. Mm -hmm. uh, just wonderful. But I think here. Ah, yeah. This is the one. This is the, the humorous, yes. the humorous one, and this was inspired by the fact that um, it's basically about a king and a queen that have lots of cats, and the queen loves the cats, and the king not so much. <laughs> the the cats pick on the king, and this was inspired by the fact that um, I loved cats, and my husband was more of a dog person, and the cats kind of did bad things in his office a lot. <laughs> shall we say yeah cats and cats are like that. he ended up really liking big dogs um so at the end of the story this story it's it's about the, the king trying to kind of be um i don't know macho or manly and he comes in with a big dog <laughs> to sort of solve the cat problem and they just play <laughs> so but then everyone's happy at the end yeah you know, so. yeah it is a funny thing about cats. My mother-in-law did not like cats. And whenever she would come over, our cats who would not go up to other people would be all over her. They know, <laughs> they know. What's funny now, my husband's a total cat fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs, no. no, so now it's switched. Now it's switched, okay. So we only have cats now. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have the golden key. Uh, a Victorian fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Yes, written, written by George MacDonald, who was one of the people, one of the writers that actually inspired Tolkien. Okay. Tolkien considered MacDonald his master. So MacDonald wrote a lot of fairy tales. He wrote At the Back of the North Wind, which was a, a, a full-length novel for, for children. So he wrote, uh, you know, quite a lot. He was a, I think he was a minister, and he wrote a lot of religious um, books as well. But I had always loved this fairy tale and wanted to make it into a picture book, but it was just too long. Okay. So eventually I decided to turn it into chapters and, and fully illustrate it in black and white. <clears throat> so I illustrated it in scratchboard. Okay. And you know it's it's interesting because even the cover is black and white. Yes. Which you know I think you know when so much is color, the black and white is even more draws it's, you even more it because it's out. so unusual yeah. at this point. Uh, and again, just the the face on the fairy there, who is turned and and looking at the person as if to say. You knew you want to buy this book. Yeah. Well, it's like, and, and it is, 
who's going to find the golden key? Are you next? Yeah. That's sort of what I was aiming yeah. for. Um, do you want to learn about the golden key? Yeah, yeah. Um, what is Scratchboard? So Scratchboard is, it starts with a hardboard masonite that is coated with white clay, many coats of white clay, and then sprayed with black India ink. Hmm. And then you take a sharp tool. I use mainly a number 11 X-Acto knife. And you scratch away and the white appears. Wow. So you have to plan <clears throat> what yeah. you want to be white. So it's not outlining, you don't outline, you just, you draw the light areas. Okay. With, um, basically with a knife revealing the white yeah, clay that, underneath. That's... So it takes some planning. I, I would imagine so, no, but it sounds like it would take some time as well. And time. Yeah. But I enjoy it. And I think we to me it's like knitting. Some more. Oh, Here's that's the big, the big version of it. So it's, it, it's an interior in the book as well as the cover. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you've got the fairy circle of mm -hmm. mushrooms and then the, the light right in the center. So here are a few. The one on the right, if you can see it, is um, one of the characters going going down these stairs kind of into the underworld. And to me, it, it felt like it was almost like reminiscent of Persephone, the, the goddess going descending yeah. into Hades. Yeah. And that was the first illustration that I did for the book. And I had actually only done one other scratch board in my life. Oh, wow. And for some reason, it just hit me to illustrate this book in Scratchboard because the book has a depth that that felt like it, it in black and white it needed something fully, I don't know, that had depth. Obviously yeah, had a lot yeah. of darks and lights and the full range. Yeah, and yeah. after I did this this one picture, I think it, it won a couple of awards. Okay, <laughs> I, I can and, see why. And then after I illustrated this book, I just wanted to do more more and more pictures in Scratchboard. So I do a lot of just fine art, um, fantasy art or just um, landscapes or okay. whatever in Scratchboard yeah. just because it's, it's my new favorite medium. <laughs> oh, case in point. So this one <clears throat> I did just for fun. Um, and it, it, as, as you said, the, the medium of black and white um, can be very striking. It's like it can, black yeah. and white movies are wonderful. Yeah. I love black and white movies. So it, it makes it more primal somehow to not have the distraction of, of color. I mean, color is wonderful too. Well, but, it is. But, but it is something different. Yeah, this, you know, and the, the dragon just emanating from the Kyoto and yeah. just beautiful. Invoking the dragon. So this is one of my latest ventures is a, a publisher of limited edition horror novel. Um, mostly reprints of things in the past. Actually, he does more than just horror. He did um, recently did Dune, but he he asked me to illustrate um, a number of horror novels. And I do princesses. I don't know how, <laughs> <laughs> but he must have seen my black and white work on my website, and you know some work that you yeah. know you didn't see here that was a little more a little darker themed. Yeah. So this is. Um, this is a collection of short stories by a British author named Terry Lamsley. Oh, 